What up, Reader Fam? Today I've got another video in my Books I've Read Recently series. The series on my channel where I share with you the books I've read recently. Pretty self-explanatory. I've got five books to share with you guys today, so without further ado, let's get started. Let's talk books. First up here I have Whoppa! Seafire, which is a young adult fantasy story, and this is actually the book explosion book of the month for the month of September, and we are partnering with Penguin Teen. Our live show will be at the end of the month, so if this book sounds interesting to you after I tell you my thoughts on it, then be sure to pick it up and join us for the live show. This story follows Caledonia Styx, and yes, that is how you pronounce her name. I finally figured out how to pronounce this character's name. It feels good, because originally I was calling her something like Celadonia. Anyway, Caledonia has put together this pirate crew full of women, and together they are setting out to get revenge on this guy named Arik. Arik is this corrupt warlord, and he actually murdered Caledonia's family, and all the women on board share similar experiences with the warlord. So they are setting out to take him down. But their mission gets a little bit sidetracked once Caledonia finds out that her brother may still be in fact alive. The only thing is is that now he is a part of Arik's crew. We follow her trying to rescue her brother while also trying to keep her crew safe. Let's first talk about what I liked about this book. First up, the action. This was the fast paced action book that I wanted it to be. It delivered the action and I was here for it. I have been craving a fast paced book and this book gave that to me. It has action at the beginning, in the middle and in the end. I've read a lot of YA books recently that have just dragged and dragged and dragged and I wanted them just to pick up the pace and move along. This one on the other hand was like we're gonna go on a wild ride and you better get ready you better hold on to something because we are not gonna take a break we're just gonna keep on sailing on. I loved the friendship showcase. I felt like this book was really built on the foundation of friendship and that's something that I love in books. I love when there is a focus on friendships. We have these women who have teamed up together and have bonded over similar tragedies that they faced in their life, and I just loved seeing them come together and work together on this ship. The last thing that I really liked about this book that actually really surprised me was the romance. Say what? I hardly ever like the romances in YA books, but this one was not rushed at all, and that's one of my main critiques with a lot of YA books that have romances in them. They are so rushed. They hardly ever take their time to kind of build that connection. It's just like the characters wake up one day and they're like, I love you. I love you. We're meant to be together for Ever. And it's just like, whoa, 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 where did this come from? Hold your horses. But this book had that slow burn romance that I'm a huge fan of, and I feel like works out really well in books. Like, I wish more books had that slow burn romance, because I feel like I would like them a lot more. <laughs> now let's talk about some things that I didn't like about this book. One of my critiques about this book is the fact that I felt like the characters needed more distinct voices and personalities. Sometimes I felt like the characters kind of overlapped a little bit. Like, take away their names and just give them one name, and I feel like you wouldn't be able to tell the different characters from each other. While they do show different characteristics, I still felt like they were a bit too similar to each other and could have used a bit more distinction. I feel like I keep saying the word distinction, but I can't think of any other words, so distinction. And my only other real complaint is the direction of the plot. On one hand, I did like the fact that it kind of went in a direction that I wasn't expecting it to go in. I don't know how to explain this, but I feel like the description of this book is a little bit misleading. Like, I gave you a pretty accurate description, but the one that this book gives you is not super accurate, and I feel like it didn't hone in on a specific plot point that the book's description kind of gives us. I don't know if I explained myself very well there, but if you've read this book, you might understand what I'm saying. Overall, I think I'd end up giving Seafire a 4 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. Again, like I said, this is the book explosion book of the month for the month of September, so if it sounds interesting to you, then definitely pick it up and join us for our live show. It's gonna be lit! Should I cosplay as a pirate for it? Let me know in the comments down below. Next up here, I have a middle grade contemporary story, and that is Half a World Away. This story follows 12 year old Jaden who is adopted and he really struggles feeling connected to anyone in his life. He doesn't really have any friends so he doesn't have any connections there and he also just doesn't feel very connected to his adoptive parents. Now his parents are wanting to adopt a new child and he does not know how to feel about this. He already kind of lives with this feeling of not being wanted and he's afraid that a new sibling will just cause more of a distance between himself and his parents. First off let's talk about what I liked about this book. I really liked the coverage of international adoption in this story. It really kind of delves in deep to how difficult it can be. Not only just the process of adoption, but also just the emotional whiplash it can have. We really see the wear and tear that it has on Jaden's parents throughout the process. They're doing everything they can to make their son Jaden happy, while also trying to make sure that they have everything lined up that they need for the adoption process. Another thing that I really liked seeing was just the overall growth of Jaden's character. At the beginning of the story, he was just really lost in life, and I feel like one of the big things 
things that he was missing at the beginning of the story was just love. He wasn't really willing to receive love or give love, and I feel like that's a big reason as to why he felt so lonely. And throughout the story, we kind of see that struggle he has with him having this wall up and not letting people in, not letting people love him. So it was kind of cool to watch him break down that wall and let love in. The one major thing that I really didn't like about this book was a part of Jaden's characterization. The author gave him this characteristic of being fascinated with electricity, and I understand wanting to give your character these different quirks to kind of make them stand out, but I really felt like it was being pushed way too much. It never really felt natural or authentic to his character, and I just felt like it was pushed in a way where it was like, okay, we get it. He likes electricity. He's so quirky and different, and I feel like it would have been fine had it not just been so obviously pushed on us. Overall, I ended up giving this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up, I read Amy and Roger's Epic Detour, which is a young adult contemporary story. In this book, we follow Amy, who has just graduated from high school, and her last portion of school she spent living alone because her mom decided that she wanted to move to Connecticut. Now that summer has arrived, it's time for Amy to road trip to Connecticut so that she can live with her mom. But the thing is, ever since a car accident that she was involved in that left her father dead, she's not been able to get behind the wheel, which is where Roger comes into play. Roger is one of her mom's friend's sons, and he also needs to make the cross-country trip. Roger has just come out of a relationship that has left him confused because he didn't really want it to end. While they set out on their road trip, the two end up taking on a detour that has them facing their troubles. I think I kind of read this book a little bit too late in the game. I feel like had I read it two to three years ago, I would have loved it, but I just kind of found it to be like an okay read. Like I enjoyed it. It was fun, but it wasn't like my everything, which I feel like a lot of people feel like this book is their everything. Let's first talk about what I did like about it. First up, I loved the road trip element. It made me me so nostalgic and it made me want to go on a road trip again. I love seeing all the different places they went to and seeing all these experiences they had. They both have been through some pretty troublesome things and it was kind of cool to see them open up to each other and kind of make a connection through these things that they have been through. I just really like seeing the development of their relationship. I feel like this road trip could have been super awkward. Like you're putting these two kids together that know nothing about each other. So I'm glad that it worked out well for them. And of course I loved the visual element of this story. There are a lot of pictures throughout the story. There are also playlists of different songs that they listened to on their trip and I thought that that was a lot of fun. Now for some of the things that I didn't like about this book. One of my main complaints is that I feel like a lot of scenes could have been chopped from this book. I feel like it would have helped the overall flow of the story. There were times that I just felt like there were scenes that didn't really affect the story or didn't really help the story move forward. It's like the story itself had some detours instead of just staying on track. And the other thing is that I just wasn't a big fan of Roger's storyline. Like he was a nice character and I did like that about him but to me I just felt like all along he knew how his storyline was going to end and I get that he just needed closure but bro come on let's move on. Overall I think I'd give this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It's definitely a fun summary read but it didn't like wow me. Next up I have here The Mesmerist which is a middle grade horror and supernatural story. This story follows Jessamine and her mother who make a living delivering messages from the dead to their wealthy clients. At first it's it's all fake. They're just doing it to make some money. But then one day, Jessamine realizes that she can actually hear from the dead. She is then invited to join this secret society that is protecting the world from ghouls and monsters. When she takes on the opportunity, she doesn't realize just how much of an impact it's going to have on her life. It changes her world completely. What I liked about this book, first off, just the spooky vibes. This book gets pretty dark with all the ghosts and ghouls and monsters. And this is the kind of book that I've been wanting to read a lot of recently because I I am in full on Halloween mode. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. I've just been in a really big mood for books like this and it really hit the spot. I also really liked having this 19th century Victorian London setting, though at times I feel like it didn't do the best job showcasing that that's where the story was taking place. The times that we did really get to see that setting, I really enjoyed. Now for what I didn't like about this book, the one thing that I feel like was its biggest downfall is that there was just too much going on. Especially for such a short book like this, like it was just a little bit it too jam-packed. It felt a little crowded up in here. I was getting claustrophobic with everything that was happening. And I love me a book that packs in a lot of stuff, but this was just too much, too much. I feel like it didn't really allow for the reader to kind of grasp everything that was happening. And that's really my only complaint about this book, but I also feel like it was a big downfall for this book. Like there was just too much happening. I feel like had this book been a little bit longer, it would have allowed for more time to explore these different things that were happening. Overall, I think I would give this book a three out of five stars. The last book that I have
have to share with you is an adult nonfiction book, and that is Ghostland. In this book, the author takes us through some of the most haunted places in America and explores the history of how these ghost stories came to be. A lot of the times he tackles these stories and kind of debunks them. And he doesn't just say things like, oh, this can't be real. He's like, here are my receipts. I'll be over here sipping some tea while you take all that in. I loved this so much more than I thought I would. Mind you, there were some stories that I feel like fell flat compared to others. Like some had more tea spillage than others. I'm someone who is just a very skeptical person when it comes to ghost stories. Like I don't really believe in all that stuff. If you do, that's fine. You do you. So for me, it was cool to see this author going to all these haunted places and to see him delve into the past and explore the history of these places and showcase why people might think that they're haunted. I just found it to be really hecka interesting. And overall, I gave this book a four out of five stars. So those are some books that I've read recently. You guys should let me know down below in the comments if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them. Or let me know down below in the comments some books that you've read recently and your thoughts on them. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I post videos frequently on this channel, so if you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and click the little bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thanks for watching guys and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye-choo! Okay. <laughs>